Welcome to Electron Online. When you're trying to add fractions and the denominators have common factors, then you must first find the lowest common denominator by using the technique where we take each of the denominators and write them as a product of their prime factors. Let's go ahead and do that with our first example here. We have the two denominators 8 and 12. So what we're going to do is we're going to write the denominators as a, as a product of their factors. And one way in which we can do that is use what we call the tree method, where we draw two lines like this. 8 can be divided by 2. 2 goes into 8 four times. Then we draw two lines again. 4 can be divided by 2. And, and what we get is 2. So that means that 8 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2. Taking the number 12, again, 12 can be divided by 2. That gives us 6. 6 can be divided by 2, that gives us 3, which means that 12 can be written as 2 times 2 times 3. Now we have to circle the prime factors which occur the most. Here the number 2 occurs 3 times, and here it only occurs 2 times. And here we have the number 3 that occurs once, it doesn't occur at all over here. So that means that the lowest common denominator in the first example is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, which is equal to 24. That means we have to change this fraction in such a way that the denominators now become 24. How do we do that? Well, I know that if I multiply 8 times 3, oops, let me write the whole fraction here. So we start with the first fraction, 3 eighths, and to make the denominator uh, equal to 24, I must multiply it times 3, which of course I must also do with the numerator. On the second fraction, Notice that I can turn the denominator into 24 by multiplying it times 2, and I, of course, must do the same to the numerator. Now I have two fractions which have the same denominators. The first fraction becomes 9 over 24. The second fraction becomes 10 over 24. When I add them together, I get 19 over 24, which is the sum of these two fractions. Let's try the second example. Again, I have denominators here which have common factors. Again I go over here, I take the number 6, I can divide that by 2 to give me 3 which means 6 can be written as 2 times 3. The number 15, that can be divided by 3 to give me 5 which, oh, <laughs> I said 5 but I wrote 3 so that means that 15 can be written as 3 times 5. Now let's circle the prime factors which occur the most here we have the number 2, here we have the number 3. It also occurs, occurs once here, but we only have to circle it once. And here we have the number 5, which means that the lowest common denominator is simply a product of all the factors that we circled, 2 times 3 times 5, which is 30. Lowest common denominator in this case is 30, which means we have to change the two fractions here so that their denominators become 30. On the first fraction, I realize that if I multiply 6 times 5, it becomes 30. That means I must multiply the denominator times 5 and, of course, also the numerator times 5. On the second fraction, I know that if I multiply 15 times 2, I get 30. I must also multiply the numerator times 2, and the two fractions now become as follows. This becomes 25 over 30 plus 14 over 30. And since the denominators are now the same, I can add the numerators. This becomes 39 divided by 30, which, by the way, can be simplified. We can divide the numerator by 3, and we can divide the denominator by 3. 39 divided by 3 is 13, and 30 divided by 3 is 10. On our next example, again, notice that the denominators have common factors, which means we need to find the common or write each of the denominators as a product of its common factors starting with the number 10 notice that is 2 and 5 so 10 can be written as 2 times 5 the next denominator 15 15 is divisible by 3 which gives us 5 15 can then be written as 3 times 5 and 25 is divisible by 5 which gives us 5 which means 25 can be written as 5 times 5 now let's circle each of the prime factors that occurs the most. The number 2 occurs over here. The number 3 occurs over here. 
And the number 5 occurs twice over here, so I'll circle those two. Now we know that the LCD is equal to the product of all the prime factors that are circled, 2 times 3 times 5 times 5, which is equal to 150. That means the lowest common denominator in this case is 150, which also means that we have to change each of the fractions in such a way that we now have a new denominator equal to that lowest common denominator. So our first fraction is 1 tenth, second fraction 2 fifteenth, the third, third fraction 4 over 25. Now what do I need to do to this denominator to turn into 150? I have to multiply this times 15, which means I must multiply the numerator times 15 as well. For the second fraction, I must multiply the denominator times 10 to turn into 150. I must multiply the numerator by the same number. And here, we must multiply the denominator times 6 to turn into 150, which means I must multiply the numerator times 6 as well. Now let's see what the new fractions look like. This is 15 over 150 plus, uh, that would be 20 over 150 plus, and there's 24 over 150. And since now all the denominators are the same, I simply add the numerators together. That's 44, 54, that's 59 over 150. See, that's 40, 50, 59, that's correct. And so that's the technique that we use to find or to add fractions together whose denominators have common factors. First, we factor each denominator, so we can write it as a product of each of their factors. Then we circle the factors which occur the most. We multiply those together. Those become the lowest common denominators. Then we come over here, we rewrite each fraction, and then we determine what number we must multiply the denominator with to turn it into the lowest common denominator. And of course, we must multiply the numerator by the exact same number. Here, the lowest common denominator was 24. 8 times 3 gives me 24, but then of course I must also multiply the numerator times 3. And that's the technique that we use to add fractions with different denominators, and that's how it's done.